There's no documented case of a release of hydraulic fracturing fluid into the environment from a natural gas well. This is what, why people not, don't trust accurate. you guys. Well, but, this is why but people Paul, don't trust Paul, you guys. Paul, you don't come clean. What would they be tested for? For what's in the fracking fluid? They, they would be tested to create a baseline to see what, what was in the water. What would they be tested for? Because this is what happened in Pennsylvania where they tested. Well, but that, so they then did that a general would be something test as a good, now let me finish in the, now. In the, I, I know, but that no, would be something you're gonna that would be in the comments. Now. This is exactly but they would be you're tested for whatever was necessary. They test. As you can see, there was a lot of love in the room. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. That scene from our debate over hydrofracking back in February, and uh, you might have even recognized one of those folks um, to my immediate left. Uh, the natural gas industry insiders going head to head with some of the toughest opponents, arguing about everything from how the will wells are drilled to what's in the fracking fluid and whether or not scenes like this. Whoa. Whether these scenes got anything to do with hydrofracking, you've all seen the video here. It's been alleged that hydrofracking could lead to increased methane levels in well water, and with a match to a running faucet, you get flames. The industry denies the link. Bottom line is, we asked both sides if they could find some kind of middle ground, and not surprisingly, we ended the show without any. Now, I want to bring Kim Blengel back in, who led our special investigation into this, um, and you know, one of the things, what we didn't get resolved out of this, is also the economics out yeah. of this, right? Yeah, and let's get into another debate. Well, this one might sound familiar to you if you followed the mortgage crisis or the collapse of Enron. While natural gas companies have been placing big bets on the wells they're drilling, saying the gas they capture will deliver big profits and energy independence, a few people have been sounding the alarm against what they call a modern-day gold rush. One of them is Deborah Rogers. She's a former investment banker with Merrill Lynch and Smith Barney. She's worked as an advisor to the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, and she's appeared in articles by the New York Times and the Rolling Stone saying that she thinks the industry is creating a bubble that the wells will peter out faster than expected. Now, we interviewed Deborah from her home in Texas where she has a goat farm that she says is surrounded by gas wells. Deborah, thanks for joining us. You know, I've heard the word Ponzi scheme being used as it's related to hydrofracking. What are your thoughts on that? That term was first used in the New York Times article that came out last summer exposing the financial anomalies of shale gas. And that term was used by industry insiders. It wasn't used by the Times. It was used by industry insiders in various documents that the Times got hold of. I think that reserves have been dramatically overestimated. We know that now. Uh, you can now compare numbers that the operators have to file with various states in the different shale bays. And uh, we can compare them to what the original projections of industry were. And the original projections were substantially overestimated. Uh, the wells have not performed up to what the industry claimed they would. And by reserves, you're saying that the amount of gas that's in this rock under the ground, you think is going to peter out way before all the estimates. That has been the case thus far. Um, if you take the Barnett, where I live in North Texas, for instance, what we're finding is that the wells here are played out 85% by about year five, and they're completely played out, out on average by about in about seven and a half years. So this is not a long-lived activity. To play devil's advocate, this is private industry. This isn't government spending people's money to drill holes in the ground that may not pay off later. This is private industry, so, so what? Unfortunately, because of the new rule change that the Securities and Exchange Commission instituted a few years ago, uh, these companies can book these reserves or this claim of reserves. The SEC did not make it mandatory that they get an independent third-party audit, so we are having to take the company's word for it uh, that the reserves even exist or and or are viable to pull out of the ground. So they can book these reserves and then borrow monies immediately within the capital markets. And of course, the more reserves you book, the more money you can borrow. So that's problematic. You know, I think there's a place for natural gas in the overall energy mix uh, as we move to alternatives. Do you think we're going to see a bubble? Do you think this is going to be a bubble just like it was, whether it was the mortgage crisis or, you know, with, with uh, the Enron crisis? What do you think is going to happen here? I think you're already seeing a bubble. I mean, when you can flip land on untested fields uh, for $25,000 an acre, that's a bubble. Um, and we're already seeing it, and I think it's becoming unraveled. Deborah Rogers, thank you so much. Well, Nancy, let me give you a chance to respond to it. What do you think? 
Well, when you introduced me, you didn't say that I also happen to be president of an investment firm that specifically looks at energy. We look at energy across all types. We look at um, hydrocarbons, we look at alternatives, we look at all of it. Um, as far as what's going on with um, natural gas, the reserves are real. Um, they're probably going to go up over time. Uh, the reason that I can say this with complete confidence is because some of the best reserve estimators in the business, and by that I'm talking about Exxon, Chevron, BP, Eni, Total, Mitsui, on and on and on, and there's over 10 major companies that have spent over a hundred billion dollars in the last three years gathering up these independents and this prospect because it is really a game changer and the biggest thing to happen in the oil and gas industry in, this, in the United States since Prudhoe Bay, North Slope of Alaska. So Deborah Rogers can say what she wants. Um, I would say that the oil industry, who it's made up of the experts who actually do this work day in and day out and also put their money behind their work, mm -hmm. they've spent okay. real money. Uh, let me ask you, Senator. Uh, Kim asked this devil's advocate question. Mm -hmm. If they're putting up their own money, they're not asking taxpayers to pony up. Uh, where's the downside or the risk? I, you know, I, I, unlike a lot of legislators in New York, actually went to Pennsylvania, s has seen it firsthand. I've gone to Texas as well, um, and I can tell you I have seen job creation, uh, and uh, that's that's the good side of this. Now there are questions with, you know, wh where where are these folks coming from who work on these rigs? Many times they're out of state; they have skill sets out out of state. Um, there are also increases in, in crime in some of these communities because you're talking about 18 to 24 year old young men typically uh, that have a lot of cash in, in their pocket in the middle of nowhere. That's never a good thing, you know. Um, but there is job creation. That said, uh, when this industry breaks something, uh, if they're not held accountable, we've seen in other states that, that they don't fix it. I've met with legislators in Texas uh, that uh, say that there, there are towns out west, in West Texas, that used yep. to be old oil towns uh, that were going downhill, that now have, have the hotels are filled, there's huge economic activity because of the increase in, in the technology. That doesn't mean that we should contaminate yep. our water or screw over private property owners in the state of New York, as has been done in, in Dave, in is that your little word? We got 30 seconds here before we get to go break. That so if the, something goes wrong, who pays for it? Well, the, I, the, for one, the gas isn't actually in the ground like they're saying. The potential gas committee, which is made up of industry representatives, say that, and this is what they've said in the reports, that there's only 11 to 24 years worth of natural gas. Now, the industry wants to export this natural gas where they can sell it. It's only selling for less than $2 here. They can sell it for $15 in China. So this is really what the game is about for them. Now, in terms of the jobs, those shares just aren't panning out. The industry said that they had 80,000 jobs in Pennsylvania. When actually all this was reviewed, there was less than 6,000 jobs created over a three-year period for the state of Pennsylvania. So 80,000 versus 6,000 uh, is a big difference. And as the senator indicated, all those are actually coming in from out of state. Okay, we're going to have some uh, final thoughts on this right after the break here. Please stay with us.